Let me talk a second about Howard Brodsky, who I uh, commented on uh, earlier today to somebody as one of my men many mentor cooperative uh, educators for me personally. Howard, uh, as you know, is the founder and chair and CEO of CCA Global Partners. CCA Global brings the benefits of group purchasing and shared services to small stream Main Street businesses. Howard is also the driving force behind Cooperatives for a Better World. CBW is supported by a diverse group of cooperative sectors. The organization is dedicated to promoting the cooperative identity and the positive difference cooperatives can make. With no further ado, I turn the program over to Howard Brodsky. Thank you very much, Gab. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm going to take you through a little bit today. Make sure we start with the right one here. And this is working. Yes, right here. I think we're living in a world today where we cannot be a better time to have co-ops be more prominent in our society. And it's interesting. This number today is eight people have the same wealth. Eight. You could put them on one, one car, a big car, but in one car. Um, and have the same wealth as half the population in the world. That's, that's an amazing number. What's more amazing was this number less than two years ago was 46 people. So now eight people have the same wealth as three and a half billion people. I mean, it's an astonishing number. And you know, one thing, I always like to think that what is the separation between co-ops and regular corporations? Well, you know, regular corporations is all about quarterly results. All you know, always look is, you know, Apple's coming out with their earnings, GM's coming out with their earnings, everybody's coming out with their earnings, and cooperatives, it's all about long-term results. For-profit companies, it's all about profit to the shareholders, and us, it's about distributed profit among its members. With regular corporations, it's about return on investment. Ours is about employee and membership and culture. There's is about future profit, ours is about shared equitable growth, and theirs is about investor relations, and co-op is all about democratic control. Um, and before actually I go to this, I just wanna, there was a great article, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm sure in the co-op community it's so many of you saw it, about Mary Anderson, who was actually inducted into the co-op hall of fame, and she passed away recently, I think at the age of 100 and something, um, and she was the founder of REI. And the article was about, do corporations have souls? And the summary of the article was that REI had a soul because Mary Anderson built it with a mission and a soul. And I think in today's world, you know, we look up here at the numbers of what's a red carpet. Co-ops have souls. They do what they do for a reason because they believe in it and it's their mission, they're mission driven. I just read an article about Mark Zuckerberg, the head of Facebook, and he, it's the big article and he said, you know, we wanna be a mission driven company. Everybody wants to be a mission driven company. The one thing with co-ops is we don't have to wanna be, we are. So it was interesting, we did a survey of what people knew about cooperatives and it was, I guess, some ways surprising and some ways not surprising. But only 11% of the population, and, and this has been done other places, other times, actually in other countries, only 11% of the population had any idea, really, with any accuracy. And even then, it was sort of limited to a, a sector. 74% had no idea they had it wrong. Matter of fact, when we asked them questions, 400, 1,400 verbatims, some thought Amazon was, uh, you know, 10 people said it was a secret. We're in some secret society. Uh, but it was interesting, when we told people what a cooperative was and explained it to them, 78% of the people said it would change their behavior of what they would do, of where they would buy goods or who they would go to for services. I mean, that's an astonishing, the company we used that did the survey said, They've never seen a number so strong like that, which tells us there's an enormous, enormous opportunity. We don't have a problem with mission. We have a problem with the communication, with messaging, not with our mission. 
But what about if we changed our perspective? This is now being shown in 14 different countries, I think in 10 different languages, including Japan, including India, Argentina, around the world. But the cooperative movement has a billion members worldwide. A hundred million people get employed by it, and half the world's population secure their livelihood in some fashion. It's an astonishing number. There's enormous power. And if we take it locally, and I say locally, into the United States, it's really quite amazing that if you take all the cooperatives together, they have more power than the NRA, AARP, and Sierra Club. I mean, it is amazing. With 30,000 cooperatives in the United States, 120 million members, and 2.1 million employees, and yet we know, no matter which side of the aisle you're on, nobody does anything without wanting to make sure are they affecting one of these three groups. And yet, we have more power than these three groups combined, but we don't use it. And so we started Cooperatives for a Better World. And what is the goal for Cooperatives for a Better World? It's really to elevate all cooperatives. All the individual associations do a great job, but together we can be stronger. We can be more powerful, and it's about elevating them not only in terms of the public, the employees, the membership of all cooperatives. We found that individual employees and members don't know what all the different sectors are. It is complex. It's, we do great work, but it's complex. We also want to do shared, more shared business. Principle six, the cooperatives should do more business with other cooperatives. And also for political advocacy, that we need to make sure that we can be tremendous advocates for issues that are facing all cooperatives across all sectors. And here, this really shows where we are. Unfortunately, according to the survey, we're at the very bottom. We're in the discovery. Most people do not know what we do and what we are. When I ask people, when I can't tell you how many people, and well-informed, educated people say, I don't understand what you do. And after about an hour of explaining, they go, isn't that, that's amazing, that's wonderful. I've never had a person said, you know, that's kind of a lousy thing, and I'm sure all of you, you know, that talk about cooperatives, anybody that talks about cooperatives loves it. But what we want to do with Cooperatives a Better World is take people from discovery to inspire. How are we going to inspire? We need to tell storytelling. We don't tell enough stories about the good work we do, we tell facts. We want to educate, we want to engage, we want to enforce and internalize. And what do we want that to happen? We want people to become lifelong cooperators. We want them to belong to multiple cooperatives. We want to, them to be engaged politically about cooperatives. And I can tell you, we've started a training program, which we have, which we're testing ourselves first in CCA, and actually NCBA is going to do it. And 
It's going to be a free educational program, both video online, that tells all about the different sectors of cooperatives in stories and so everybody can understand. We want to do it first with employees and then with members. And it's interesting, we just got back initial results from our company. And we asked about eight questions before they took any of the educational material and online. And we asked them, you know, what do you know about cooperatives? How much do you recommend cooperatives? Did you tell your friends to go? How much do you share on social media? What social media tools do you use? How much do you share? On the initial results back, and we think our employees are very well informed because I'm very active in the cooperative world. We have a lot of town halls. If I'd put ours, I would have thought on the top end. They went from where they were to almost increasing their commitment to cooperatives from before the course and after the course, about 30 to 40% more. They were willing to share, 80% willing to share social media with all their friends about cooperatives. There is so much potential we have, and the whole idea of Cooperatives for a Better World is not starting from the outside of, I call it the consumer. We're not going to see ads on TV. There are almost 100, over 100 million members and 2 million employees. We want to start with people that are already committed to what we want to do and build out. We have built a, a, a wonderful, amazing website that Cooperatives for a Better World, and you should go on at cooperativebetterworld.coop. And it's all about understanding and learning about all the different cooperative sectors. It also has cooperative locators in every area, so you know who's there. It also has co-op cares. It tells about all the good being done by different co-op sectors all over the country, by different sectors. And people can really, and it has storytelling in it. So it's an amazing tool to learn more for everybody to learn more about cooperatives and to become engaged in cooperatives. We're going to build a co-op exchange. We're working with Monique LaRue, who's the president of the International Cooperative Alliance. And what is a co-op exchange? It is an Amazon marketplace just for co-ops. So you can imagine if somebody wants to support co-ops, if we get our members engaged, we get our employees engaged, where do they go? Well, sometimes a lot of people go online for things, but if they could just, if they want hardware online, there'll be an ACE hardware store they can go to online to buy goods. If they want flooring, but if they also they want childcare, they want home care, you know, about what food products. It will be an, a marketplace just for cooperatives to do business and for their employees and for their members. Co-op communities. We think this is the biggest opportunity. At the end of the day, co-ops are local. We have national associations, we have national brands, but at the end of the day, co-ops all are about local, local, local. And what co-op communities are going to do is we're taking and we're going to make it so that we provide avenues to enhance collaboration, create synergies between co-ops and credit unions and mutuals, and leverage economies of scale to best practices, target cost saving, and for co-ops to do more business with each other for its members and its employees. And I want to give you, this is, we're going to build the United States out into 200, about 220, 225 communities. And what is a community? Well, in the case of Vermont, Vermont is a community. In the case of D.C., D.C. will be a community. Madison, Wisconsin. It depends on the, the, both the geography and the population and the density. And this is an actual community in the Midwest. There are 150 co-ops. The population of this community is 243,000. There are 150 co-ops, and they're made up of housing co-ops. They're made up of purchasing co-ops. They're made up of farmer co-ops, food co-ops credit unions, there's some mutuals. It's made up of typical sectors. Some communities are going to have maybe a, some more of one sector than the other. But actually, the makeup here is pretty typical. There are 73,000 members of co-ops in this community, which actually reflects about what's in the United States. About one out of every three people are members of some type of a cooperative. 
and this is about one out of about a little less than one out of three. That's about what's reflective in our in our United States. And they're 4,100 employees. We are going to bring them together. We're already starting. Going to start a pilot in the next 90 days. And what are we going to do in the communities? We're going to have exclusive offers for members of co-ops in the community. If you're a member or you're an employee, co-ops can make offers. I know our companies will be love to do. I've talked to Gina. She would love to. It would be amazing to have a benefit for being part of the co-op community. So voluntarily, any co-op can post an offer. You can read exclusive news of what's going on in the community what's happening, what activities, what co-ops are doing what in the community. We're also going to have a section on co-op cares. Because one of the things we believe is co-ops do such great work in the communities. And does everybody really know what they're doing? The credit unions are doing one thing, but is it being shared? And the food co-ops doing another thing, but is it being shared? So it will be a place to have co-op cares so everybody knows what's doing in the community. We're going to have a co-op community volunteer. We have already have 43 people who have volunteered to be volunteers um, in the communities without even putting much word out. And these were people who pulled together the different sectors. We'll have amazing things going on. And just to give you some idea, and this you'll never read, so I'll explain it to you. Um, these are a lot of activities that will happen in the community. We can do marketing with each other. Just think new homeowners come in, if they got a package that said, from your local co-ops, and all, tell about all the good work we're doing, and all the places they can go bank or shop or do business with any type, that we'll have all kinds of ability to share media and share resources for marketing. Cost saving. We have looked, in most communities, there'll be enormous amount of people that have physical build facilities. It could be a, you know, a utility company that has a building. It could be retail stores that have building, a child care, home care. Anybody has facilities. We are resourcing with Topco, that is the largest food retailer in co-op in the United States. They have 43 members. Their members do $200 billion in business. They have a division called Top Source that sources only things that have nothing to do with food. So it's everything to do with um, credit card processing, to landscaping, to plowing, to um, insurance, anything to run their business, non-food. And we are partnering with them because they already do, they have local services they're already sourcing in almost every community in the United States. Their average member is $5 billion. We think we can provide our local co-op community with cost savings to run their operations of 15 to 20 percent on some basic services. And boy, won't that be a benefit to every co-op to reduce their cost by being part of the co-op community. We could start the next generation councils within a community. We started a next generation council at CCA and it has gone amazing to have an under 40 group. All, we have, just in one of our groups, and Carpet One alone, we have 175 members of the Next Generation Council. And what energy. But just think in a community that all the next generation from all the different sectors could get together with each other, what power that is. Think about how we could engage local colleges in every community, because we already have a network there of a community we could then go to the local colleges. We just had a, a business competition from one of our colleges that Kaylee and I just went and judged. You imagine if we had local business competitions about starting co-ops in all colleges across the United States. We can do it if we already have the community built. There is enormous energy. The community also can be tremendous advocates for issues going on before Congress. Look at everything when it comes down to political issues is local. And so what better place for them to get together? I know there's an issue right now before the credit unions that their mortgages of homes that are not homeowner occupied are being classified as business loans, not mortgages. They want to have an issue with that 
and they want to, to try to change that ruling, well, why wouldn't all the co-ops be interested in helping the, co the credit unions change that? With communities, we can be engaged. There are so many places that communities can be actively meaningful to co-ops. The why. I think so often we tell in our world of co-ops what we do and how we do it, and what separates us is why we do it. We don't tell enough stories. My wife knows Joan, who's here. When I tell people about co-ops, the first story I tell them, because they don't understand, it takes me 25 minutes or half hour, and they understand a little, but I tell them the Prospera story in California, which I think most of you know, about these wonderful women that came over from Central America and the wonderful story how they formed the cooperative. And after about two minutes of that story, everybody goes, that is amazing. And we need to tell more stories because all our sectors have amazing stories to tell. And we live in a world of social media and stories, and we don't tell the stories. And so we need to tell the stories of this is why. And talking about stories, I think one of the stories, I was trying to reflect in co-ops, and to me, one of the great stories, because a lot of times I think people look at us as David versus Goliath. I know, you know, people talk to our companies, you know, we're, we're competing with Home Depot and Lowe's and other large companies in different sectors of our business. If you look at most of the co-ops, they compete with large people. And Malcolm Gladwell had a, in, his one, in a book about three years ago, told the original story of David versus Goliath. And I'm not sure how many of you saw it, but it was 3,000 years ago, and Israel's biggest enemy was the Philistines. And the Philistines were in the coastal areas, and the Israelis were on the mountains. And the Philistines wanted to take and split Israel in two. The Israelites mounted their army and were ready on one side, but wherever one, whichever one was going forward was going to be on for a slaughter. And so both armies were staying there, um, the, one on the coastal area and one on the other, with the valley in between, and they stayed there not doing anything for two weeks in a standoff because knew, both knew whoever moved first was just going to get slaughtered. Finally, the Philistines said, as I guess it was done many times in those times, we will send our best warrior to fight your best warrior. And whoever wins will have won and take control. They sent the six foot nine giant. This was 3,000 years ago. It was a six foot nine giant. King Saul said, who shall go fight this giant? Nobody raised their hand from all the Israeli army. No one. And they waited, waited. And then this little shepherd boy came and said, I will fight him. And he said, you cannot fight him. How can you fight him? He said, I will fight him. And before he went down, he took five little stones and he put them in his pack as the shepherd had, and he went down. And the giant looked at him and said, what are you doing? You're not gonna fight me. And he was there with all his armor and the little shepherd boy was just standing there and he took out his slingshot and he took a stone and the very first stone hit the giant right here the giant dropped in one second. The shepherd boy went over, took the uh, giant's sword, and chopped off his head. As you can imagine, all the Philistines looked, and they ran away, and Israel was the victor. And that story developed into the story of David versus Goliath. But what's interesting is, it was actually not such an improbable victory. And I think this is what is interesting about co-ops. And why was that not an improbable victory? Because the reality is, 
David was extremely proficient with a slingshot. He was a shepherd, and he had to keep out lions and tigers from his flock. And he could kill a lion from 200 yards away with a slingshot. It turns out that the slingshot power would shoot that rock as quick as a 45 millimeter gun, and it was as powerful as a gun. And that the stones he picked up, for all the, nobody knew, but had a density of five times the normal stone that you would ever pick up. And the other part is that the giant, it turns out that even in current days, when people are enormously big, tall, enormously out of proportion, and extremely tall, that most of them have a defect that affects their eyesight and pituitary glands. And he had poor vision. It turns out that actually somebody had let him down, a little boy had let him down to the area they were fighting because his eyesight wasn't perfect. So he couldn't see, David even had a slingshot. His vision was not good. And he had no idea. He came down to fight with armor, thinking he was going to fight with armor, but David was never going to battle him with armor. He decided way long ago that he was going to have a slingshot that he was going to take him out with. And I think, does this reflect so much of where, to me, of what co-ops are? Co-ops, to me, we fight giants, but we have to do it smarter. We need to use the slingshots we have. And what do we have for tools? We have millennials. Millennials love who we are. Let me tell you, the big companies don't have the millennials. I can tell you from talking with millennials, they love co-ops. Once they learn about them, they can be one of our bullets. We have mission and social good and ownership. Big corporations don't have that. We can be nimble. I can tell you the bigger companies become, they can't be nimble. They're like Goliath. They can't move quickly and they can't see quickly. We have a lot of things at our back, and we, it is not improbable that we win. It is probable that we win because we have the right tools against where people are today and where what is called for in our society today. People are looking for us. We have to just tell them that we are a cooperative. We believe in we not I. We see opportunity in each other and everywhere. We are members. Owners. Family. We learn from our past. We keep our eye on the future. We love what we do. We are built for you. And by you. We are masters of our own destiny. We give back. We give big. We never stop dreaming. We are leaders. Life changers. We empower people. We improve lives. We create jobs. We are people helping people. We believe everyone has a unique voice. And in the power of numbers. We are limitless. We go forward together towards success. We foster creativity. And innovation. We dare to be different. We honor the individual. We celebrate the collective. We are many members. We are one force. One vision. We are building a better world. Now. Together. 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 We are a cooperative. Nous sommes une coopérative. Somos una cooperativa. I want to thank you very much. I, I just think now is the time and place. I would like, if we need help, because we can make the communities happen now. Our goal is to come out with them in the next four to five months. We're operating the first three pilots. We want to op open every community in the United States within 24 months. So we need help, volunteers, connections, Financial support is important, but so much can be done with so little right now because we have the wind at our back. And if we can get together, 
we can leverage all of us to be better now. So thank you. Mm -hmm.